So um, I haven't vlogged for a little while, but I'm back with a uh, April Sozine vlog. So this is a bit of a roundup of what I've been up to recently and some of my current plans um, and purchases. So I was going to start by mentioning uh, what I've been up to earlier today. So this morning was the annual open day of the um, Birmingham branch of the Guild of Weaver Spinners and Dyers um, that I'm a member of. And um, one of the things, so there's lots of demos and um, hands-on uh, opportunities to try out the crafts and lots of tea and cake, but they also always have a sale table at the uh, open day. And I always buy something. So I thought you might be interested in the things I purchased. So first up, um, one of the members of the guild makes ceramic buttons. Um, and so this is the set that I bought from her today. Um, so I'm thinking, I mean, they're slightly large, but I'm thinking they'd look really nice on a shirt. So um, yeah, they're going in the stash for now, but hopefully maybe get those on, a, on the front of a shirt um, in the near future. And then the other thing, the same uh, guild member that I purchased the buttons from um, had also grown. So she does lots of natural dye in Carolyn and she'd also, um, she also had some dye plants for sale. So this is a little madder plant. And um, if I turn around, you can see the top of the plant itself. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I haven't done any natural dye in, um, recently, but I'm hoping to do some this summer. It's always more tempting in the summer because it's easier to, to dye in the garden really. Um, make a mess outside uh, so this plant obviously i won't be um able to use this anytime soon um because there's, there's a note on the front so you use the, the roots matter and there's a note saying that you need to grow this for three years before you start to think about dying from it um but i thought planting some dye plants again this year um and starting thinking about dying will get me inspired again so yeah so those were the purchases this morning and then Something that I purchased a little while ago now, but I wanted to share with you. Um, so Windman Buttons um, have started doing, so they're based in Stoke on Trent. Um, and they, uh, so they, they hand make buttons, it's family business, they hand make buttons, but they also started doing some stitch markers. So I bought this set from them um, probably a couple of months ago now. And it's a little tea set, there's a little teapot, cups and a milk jug. Um, yeah, and I, I actually, the reason I hadn't um, started using them yet is just because I'd been knitting quite chunky yarn um, and the needles are so thick that, that they wouldn't fit on, but they'll fit on, um, you know, they're not, it's not as if they're tiny, they would fit on a lot of needle sizes. sizes. So yeah, I'm hoping to, the, the only other thing as well is that I, um, stitch markers are one of the few things that I, umbrellas and stitch markers are basically the only things that I do regularly lose. So I am a bit paranoid about uh, losing these. Um, they're so cute and I, I have a bit of an obsession with all things miniature so when I saw that they were doing little miniature kind of dolls out size um, tea sets I, I couldn't resist so yeah so hopefully I'll put those to use on my knitting quite soon uh, so next thing I was going to mention so um, I'm sure you'll know that uh, Fashion Revolution Week is coming up at the uh, later this month um, near the end of April um, and they release, um, I think a couple of times a year, they release a zine. Um, uh, obviously the, the theme is always about, it's well the same things as Fashion Revolution. So it's about um, issues in the, the fashion industry currently. It's about craft, um, it's about sustainability. Um, but then, but the zines do have specific um, themes within that as well. So this is their latest one. Um, and you can see it's about fashion craft revolution. Um, and if I just give you a flick through. So there's a couple of actual uh, tutorials at the back. There's one about customizing an Aran sweater um, and there's one about crazy quilting. So those are actual tutorials. Um, but then most of it, if I go that way, um, is articles about different craft techniques. Um, and they're all illustrated um yeah and about different um historical crafts in different parts of the world uh interviews there's all sorts in there but yeah this is a particularly um large one actually because i've got so when i was ordering this so this is their recent um zine that's just been released but while I was ordering it and paying the postage i also picked up one of their previous ones this is the so they've released four in total and this is 
I think. I think this is the fourth. Fifth. Yeah, fourth. And I picked up the previous one, issue three as well. Um, which So you can see that one was more about environment. Um, and you can see the size difference um, between the previous one and the, the latest. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And I thought with Fashion Revolution Week coming up, it would be good to um, support them by buying the zine. Um, I'm also hoping to get around to making something um, to mark Fashion Revolution Week. Last year I made a, a screen printed tea um, with the Fashion Revolution logo on. So we'll see. Um, I'd like to make something. So that one, the tea I made last year, I bought some fabric from Offset Warehouse. So it was a um, you know as sustainable fabric as it were. Um, but I'd really like to make something from scraps or um, something even more sustainable than buying new fabric, really. But we'll see. We'll see how we get on. Um, if not, I can do that later in the year. But it would be nice to mark uh, Fashion Revolution Week itself. So what's next? So another book actually. So after talking about the zines, so I was going to share a couple of books that I've um, purchased this month. So the first, which I'm sure I've heard about, was Karen Ball's new book, um, The Little Book of Sewing. So if I bring it up close, you can see. And uh, um, I actually, um, because I subscribe to Karen's newsletter, which is really good, I, um, comes out uh, on a Saturday or Sunday, um, and. Uh, it's just a quick read, but I really enjoy it, so I recommend subscribing. Um, but Karen put out a call through her newsletter a little while ago for people who'd like to uh, receive a a pre-release uh, pre PDF copy of the book. So I've actually already read the book, um, but I, I ordered a hard copy as well. And I was actually quite um, pleasantly surprised, surprised when it arrived um, by how small it actually is. It's a very cute little book. Um, so yeah, it'll look very sweet on the shelf. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I wrote a um, short blog post uh, review of the book, which you can find on my blog, but I just really enjoyed it. It's just really positive. Um, it's really quite inspiring in terms of motivating you to to pick up a, a needle of thread or sit behind the sewing machine. Um, and it just really celebrates the sewing community. So yeah, highly recommended. And I, um, so, not wanting to sound very vain, but I was very excited as well because I'm actually mentioned in the back in terms of blogs that Karen recommends. So that was very exciting to see myself in a um, in my blog in a printed book. Um, yeah, that was lovely. So that was one book I wanted to mention. And then the other one is this. So um, obviously this is the book uh, which accompanies the Dior exhibition at the V&A, which is on currently. Um, and um, I haven't seen the exhibition yet. I'm going in May, but I thought I'd pick up the book first and have a look through. I had a flick through it in a shop and um, really liked it. So um, then all, it, it's quite heavy. So I think we were out for the day somewhere and I couldn't face buying it there and then, but I ordered a copy online. Um, and yeah, it's just really nice. The um, There's a couple of introductory, short introductory essays, which are actually really interesting. Um, and um, one of the, so the, You'll probably know the Dior exhibition was on in pa uh, Paris first uh, a couple of years ago now, I guess. And then it's now on in London and one um, difference. So it's different curators. So it's 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 the same pieces, but slightly different curate, um, curated slightly differently, basically. Um, but one of the things they've added for the London exhibition is a section about Dior in London and Dior's relationship with Britain. Um, and so the book has an essay on that, which was really interesting. Um, um, there's quite a bit about the ready to wear um, lines, the early red, ready to wear or uh, yeah, ready to wear lines. Um, so that was interesting. And then the, obviously the main thing is the pictures and the, the, the ugh, pictures are lovely. It's a nice selection in terms of dates etc so um so yeah recommend the book and i'm sure the exhibition will be excellent i'm looking forward to going soon um and actually on that while we're talking about the dior exhibition grab one other thing so so um if you saw which uh, you probably couldn't avoid because i posted it loads but um if you saw the uh, outfit that I made for the refashioners last year um, I made a, a outfit um, from uh, second hand uh, 
garments, which was inspired by Dior's new look and particularly the bar jacket and, and the look that went with the bar jacket. So I made that last year for the refreshers. I'm planning to wear it to uh, the Dior exhibition when I go next month. Um, and uh, that uh, new look silhouette and the bar jacket would have been worn over a waspy style corset. I didn't bother with that when I did the refreshers, but Gertie has since released this pattern with Butterick for a uh, waspy style, new look style corset. And I'll, I'm tempted, to, I'm going to try and uh, time permit and give this a go and make it to wear to the um, V&A. So I'll wear this with my refreshers outfit over, over the top. So yeah, so that's my uh, kind of one of my next projects. I've got a couple of things on the go, but this is, this month I'm hoping to make this. Um, and um, because I've never made a corset before, I don't really so lingerie, I've done the odd bit, but not much. Um, so yeah, I so this corset that is, is really just a way to the VNA and I doubt I'm going to be wearing very often. I think I've spent already spent forty pound and this pat plus this pattern on supplies, and then there's probably still the odd thing to get. So yeah, it's worked out a bit expensive, but I'm I'm intrigued to get go, and I think it'll be it'll be good fun um, to wear that as well as the the rest of the of the new look inspired uh, outfit. So yeah, and uh, I was going to mention while we're talking about patterns, the other lovely patterns that I've um, received this month. So um, Claire uh, sent me, really kindly gifted me two pattern, vintage patterns from her stash when she was having a clear out. So this was one of them. So it's Claire I want from I Want to Be a Turtle. Um, so this was one. Um, which is just lovely. Um, and both of these were, are, are roughly my size, so I shouldn't need to do too much in terms of some modifications to try them out. Um, so yeah, they were, it was really generous of her to give me those. So I'm hoping to uh, relatively soon sew, sew those up rather than um, letting them just sit in the stash. I mean, they the are gorgeous anyway, but I do want to sew them as well as just admire looking at them. So yeah, so that's patterns. So jewellery was the next thing I was going to mention. So I'm sure you'll already have seen, um, but the, the absolutely lovely Kathy from So Dainty has released um, a line of necklaces. Um, and I was really lucky. She very generously sent me one um, uh, just before release. So I was going to show you so, but they're absolutely gorgeous. And highly recommend them. So they come in a little box. And then the necklace itself. So I have got the scissors necklace. And you can see it's got a lilac handle um, and then the, the scissors themselves, the blades are glittery. So hopefully you can see that. Yeah, so they're lovely. And the scissors in particular were really popular. So when Kathy first released them a few weeks ago, the scissor design actually sold out. Um, but she's got more back in stock now. So you can get yourself scissors. Um, and there's also a button design, a cotton reel design and a yarn ball. So yeah. So uh, go and have a look at those. There'll be a link below. Uh, right, what else? So, oh yeah, so I was gonna mention um, a couple of things I'm doing. So one of the things is that I started a new um, Instagram account to reshare uh, challenges or, and meetups. So basically community events in the sewing community and it's called social events. So I've got it on the iPad so you can hopefully see. Um, yeah, so. I just, it is all about resharing basically. So if there's a sewing community uh, challenge or a meetup, I'm resharing them on this account. Um, and um, so they'll reshare them in the feed. But then the thing that I think is quite useful is that in the, in my highlights, I am doing a highlight per month of the challenges and uh, meetups that I'm aware of. So you can go to the account, you can click on April say, and you can see all the, um, everything that I'm aware of, so it would be a, a list basically that you can look through of um, challenges and meetups and you can see if there's anything you want to participate in. So yeah, so check that out. And obviously if you are organising a challenge or a meetup and I've missed it, if you um, share it with me, ideally with uh, at the social events account, but you can share it with me as well and then I'll um, post it on there. So hopefully it's it's a place you can go to check deadlines and dates and what's what's up in terms of challenges. 
Um, and then the other thing I was going to mention is that I'm organising a meetup in Paris called uh, Paris Social and Paris Coud. We've got a, an English um, name and hashtag and a French one as well. I'm organising it with um, Carmen uh Common Bouchard, um, who blogs um, and also was the winner of the first series of Kusuman, the French sewing bee. Um, and Carmen's really good fun. I've attended a number of her meetups, including the Paris meetup that she organised back in, um, I think it was 2014. So this was really an opportunity to uh, do that again, basically, to get together, have an opportunity to get uh, have an international meetup in Paris. So we're doing that in May. It's uh, over the weekend of the 18th 19th of May um, and obviously all welcome you can sign up by the Eventbrite uh, page so that we know to expect you and include you in emails with any updates so yeah uh, so that's what uh, I'm up to in terms of uh, organising at the moment um, so other things that I wanted to mention uh, so one was uh, a favourite pat recent pattern release and that's uh, the new pattern with the new issue of the Lisa Comfort magazine. Um, and uh, it's called Amelia and it's a little short crop jacket. Um, and I've got, uh, from Sew Up North, I bought uh, some fabric that I think will be perfect for that. It's it's kind of a, um, a shearling uh, fur effect on one side and then the other side is like a fake leather. Um, so I'm thinking that it, the fur collar and then the fake leather on the body it would it would work really well with that pattern so I'm going to give that a try um yeah I'm not sure when uh, I'm not going to be sewing up straight away but that was a favorite recent pattern release um and then in terms of what I am going to be sewing next in, in addition to the corset um I uh, treated myself recently to some fabric um by the Jap the Japanese uh, fabric company Koka um and uh yeah so i ordered this from japan actually um guthrie garni had it in stock but by the time i went uh decided to um treat myself and order it they'd run out so i ordered this from miss matabi uh matatabi um and i got went for the white colorway there was a number of colorways and you can see it's a, it's a double gauze and then it's got a um kind of astrological uh pattern embroidered on so it's like a 3D effect brought it onto the fabric. Hopefully you can see that. It needs a good iron. It looks a bit creased, I'm afraid. But yeah, so that's um, uh, that's kind of next on the sewing list, I think. Um, and I'm hoping to make that to wear to the Paris meetup, actually, to Paris Social. So yeah, so but I might get started sooner and then know that it's safely done and, and hanging in the wardrobe ready. So since I last vlogged, I um, have attended a few meetups since the start of this year. So I um, visited New York and I timed it to attend. In fact, the whole trip was built around basically attending uh, Peter Lappin's meetup, Mail Pat and Boldness Day. So um, I've been there recently. And then um, another um, meetup that I attended was um, the Dressmakers Ball in Leicester, which is uh, organised by Sarah and Freya from Crafty So and So. Um, so I this is the second dressmakers ball, um, and I've attended both. I attended the first as well two years ago. Um, two years ago, um, I I don't know why now, but uh, it's not exactly surprising that I managed to leave making my dress until the last minute, and then I finished it. The, I basically sewed the dress the day before, so I just went with a fairly easy knit dress. But this time I was um, committed to uh, actually being organised and making my dress in good time. So I made the dress um, with some fabric that I purchased uh, on Mail Pattern Boldness Day, in fact. Um, and I made Gertie's night and day dress. And then because I was organised, I had some time uh, after making the dress before the ball. So I decided to make some accessories as well. Um, and I had enough fabric to uh, stretch out to a few accessories. So I made a matching belt, um, I made a pillbox hat, and then I also made a little bag. So I was just going to show you briefly the accessories. So um, this is the pillbox hat. Well, this is a remake of it. So uh, it's really simple. I actually have a um, hat making book that I picked up for a couple of pounds in the works bookshop here in the UK. 
Um, and but the pattern's really simple. It's basically obviously so um, they recommend using actual millinery supplies. Obviously, I didn't. Um, so I actually it was from Fancy Silk Store um, here in Birmingham. But I basically it was almost um, it, they kept it with the interfacing, um, but it was almost like a plastic sheet um, that I that. Um, that's what I used. So I cut a circular shape out of the top of this like plasticky interface and stuff. Then I um, cut a, a a long rectangle which was the side. Um, the circular top section I cut little um, cuts all the way around and then folded that down and that allowed me then to attach the rectangle to it. The, if you're using actual millinery supplies obviously you'll be able to stick them or sew them together because this uh, fabric, this uh, material that I was using is so hard, you can't sew through it. So I actually um, punched holes all the way around and then I sewed through the holes to attach to attach the, uh, the material underneath the fabric together. So that's how I made the base and then I obviously coated it, uh, as you can see, with uh, the fabric. And this fabric, so this is the, it's a double sided brocade, so this is the one side and this is the other side. And this matches the dress I made for the dressmaker's ball. And then um, in terms of attaching them, I just put um, some little, you can see, little grommet things through the sides. And then, um, so there's one each side. And then I'll just, I haven't done it, uh, put the elastic through yet, but I just string some elastic through. And then obviously you can wear it with elastic behind your ears. I've got a headband on so you can't really see, but obviously it just balances then. With the elastic, it, they do relatively stay on. Uh, at the dressmaker's ball, it did fall off a bit because I was dancing. Um, and I think probably if I put the elastic, so behind my ears, and then use a few hairpins to keep it in place, it'll probably stay on more reliably. So this is the fabric that I made the hat in for the dressmaker's ball. But, uh, and I should say, I it was a prize winning, uh, not just the hat, it was the bag and the hat and the belt because I made three accessories. But they were prize winning um, because at the dressmaker's ball they have a number of prizes and one is for best accessory and uh, I won it. Um, so it's a prize winning hat. The next day, um, before heading home, we spent some time in Leicester. I, I left. The, I didn't want to crush the hat in my suitcase because it was quite full, so I left it. In, I had it in a plastic bag with a couple of other bits. Left the bag in McDonald's for a few moments and it was stolen or thrown away. It wasn't there when we went back. So the hat was lost, so I've recreated it. And actually this second version is a bit neater than the first one. It's lined now, which the first one wasn't. Um, just because of the difficulty of attaching. Because the fabric doesn't actually attach to that plasticky stuff. You have to sew the fabric to itself. So it's a bit fiddlier to line. But yeah, so this was the hat uh, that matched my dressmaker's ball outfit. And then I also have made a second one. Um, so this one, which is a little pink one. You can see it's like a faux snake skinny type fabric. It's a PVC. So yeah, so that's, um, and so, so obviously you wear it like that with a bit of elastic um, to attach. Um, and this fabric was also from Fancy Silk Store here in Birmingham, as well as, again, I've been using the plasticky um, material inside to, to form the, the shape. So yeah, so I've got a collection of two pillbox hats now. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure where I'm gonna wear them, but they were really fun to make and they were really quick. I mean, I think I made both really, Made the two in an evening, probably. Maybe a bit of f f uh, finishing after, after. But yeah. Um, and it was quite nice to have a little hand sewing um, project because they, they were obviously hand sewn. Um, so I've just sewn the, the fabric to itself around the around the base. So, oh, and I was just going to show you. So those are the hats. And then the bag that I made for the dressmaker's ball, which was just a really simple one. I used, um, I just used a strap off a, an existing handbag of mine with the strap's arm. But just a really simple, and again, you can see it's this double-sided brocade, so I used both sides um, and just put a preston on the front to attach. Um, but yeah, and that was a free pattern from um, Simply Sewing Magazine here in the UK, which I think I received the, pack, the magazine probably a couple of days before the ball, and then I made the bag, I think, the day before the ball, but obviously it was it was no risk, no pressure, because if, if it hadn't worked out, I just wouldn't have... Um, would have left it at home. So, uh, yeah, so I think that's everything I've got to share today. That's probably long enough. Um, but yeah, it's good to be back. I, um, I've i missed vlogging. It's just been getting time at home when it's actually light and, and compiling all this stuff that I want to show you, getting it together. So 
So thanks for watching um, and hopefully I'll manage to uh, keep it up more regularly again this year from now on.